Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? A client reached out to me and told me that he has a chessboard that sits on top of a custom made box that holds his chess pieces. It's a really nice set, but he's seen several of my videos and he asked if I could make a new chessboard for him that would match the box. So in this video, I'm going to make a double-sided chessboard with Wenge and curly maple squares on one side and Chechen and curly maple squares on the other side. Chechen is a really nice reddish brown wood from Central America and does not come from the Chechen Republic as its name might suggest. But before I start, I want to draw your attention to another woodworker in Australia known as the One-Handed Maker. He has some really nice work that he has released on YouTube and his latest video is of a chessboard with zebra wood inlay. It turned out beautifully. So I suggest you take a look at his channel and maybe even subscribe. So let's get started. I'll start by cutting the material for the squares. This first piece is Wenge. And this one is Chechen. I'll flatten one face and one edge on the jointer. I also have curly maple for the light squares. Next, I'll run everything through the planer to get all of the pieces to the same thickness. The squares need to be 59 millimeters wide, so I'm cutting everything oversize so I can trim them with nice clean edges on the table saw. Now I'm resawing the strips into thinner strips because I'll be gluing these onto a plywood substrate for stability. Next, I'll cut the strips down to precisely 59 millimeters. Now it's time for the first glue up. Here I'm gluing up the strips of Chechen and curly maple.
I glued up the wenge and curly maple off camera and this is it coming through the sander now. Now I'll square up one end of each board and then run them along the table saw fence to cut the squares. The client is very detail oriented and he even sent me a CAD drawing of his design so I knew my usual sloppy work was not going to cut it. Still a little too large so I'll trim just a bit more. Now I will cut the plywood to be one inch larger than the playing field so that there will be a half inch tongue all the way around the playing field that the frame will fit into. Now it's time for the second glue up. This clamping jig works really well because it allows me to get clamping pressure all around, especially at the edges where it's most important. The next day it's ready to be sanded. This is the Chechen side. Before proceeding, I need to be absolutely sure that the board will fit into the box, and it does. Now I'll start working on the walnut frame. I'll cut the four pieces and mark the ends of each piece so that I can keep track of them for grain continuity.
before proceeding to the next step, I want to be sure that the edges of the playing field have clean straight edges after the glue up and that they're aligned on both the top and the bottom so that the frame fits tightly on both sides. This will result in the squares around the perimeter being slightly smaller, but I'm taking off the smallest amount possible so it won't really be noticeable. Next I want to cut a groove down the center of each frame piece that is slightly more than a half inch deep. This groove will fit over the plywood tongue. I'm not even close after this first cut, but that's because the Chechen side of the board is going to sit proud of the frame, so I need to proceed cautiously so that I don't cut too much off the Wenge side, which will sit flush with the frame. I'll go back to the table saw multiple times to sneak up on the fit. Now I'm resawing a piece of cherry for inlay on the frame. The cherry will provide a subtle contrast to the walnut. I'll sand those pieces down just to get a flat surface and then I'll begin carving the male portion of the inlay on the CNC router. This is such a fine font the client selected that I had some breakaway, so I'll need to carve the inlay again to see if I get better results. I'll cut the frame pieces to width, and then I cut a groove along the outer edge to hold the curly maple edge banding. While the CNC is recarving the inlay, I will cut the strips of the edge banding on my bandsaw and then run them through the drum sander to get them down to the exact width to, to fit into the groove. and then I'll glue them into the frame and let the glue cure overnight. The inlay is looking better this time, but there's still a risk that some of the finer portions will break off. I'll trim the edge banding to be flush with the edge of the frame, and then I'll work on adding the brass border. I'm setting the blade height to the exact thickness of the brass, which is an eighth of an inch. And then I'll cut a rabbit along the inner edge to hold the brass.
I'm sanding the brass slightly to abrade the surface, and then I'll use some Starbond CA glue to attach the brass. When using the Starbond accelerator on the brass before attaching it, I'm able to sand the frame pieces after only a few minutes. Next I'll cut the miters. It's not as easy as I make it look because I need to sneak up on the lengths to get them to fit exactly. So I made multiple trips to the table saw to get them to fit perfectly. Parts of the first inlay are better than the second one, and vice versa, so I'm going to piece together the best parts. Now I'll carve the female portion of the inlay into the frame pieces. I'm going to put a quote on each player side of the Wenge side of the board, and I'll put algebraic notation on all four sides of the Chechen side. Note that I pieced in the quotation mark from the first inlay because it turned out better than the second one.
And this is the other quote. The names of Charles Buxton and Benjamin Franklin were the most difficult because the font was smaller, so I had to piece together bits and pieces. Here I had to cut a little piece of cherry to serve as the dot for the eye because it kept falling off each time I tried to carve it. Now that the glue has dried, I can cut off the excess and then sand to reveal the inlay. I'm carving everything with a 15 degree V bit. Now I'm going to mark the locations of the floating tenons that I will use to align and strengthen the mitered corners.
I'm pretty sure that it's a quarter inch bit that I had in the router. The tongue and groove fitting was pretty tight and I needed to move quickly because there's not a long open time with regular wood glue. and I'll clamp the corners to help keep the frame pieces in alignment. The next day, it's ready for sanding. The client asked for a kind of an OG edge, but his design was a little different from a standard OG bit, so I did this in two passes with two different bits. I'm using a regular OG bit here. set the bit height so that the maple edge banding would be centered between the remaining walnut. Mm -hmm. 
For the next pass, I'm using this cove bit with a half inch radius to smooth out the curve. I just needed to place it carefully so that the curve was right. And then on the other side, I'm using a quarter inch round over bit. Now a bit of hand sanding, and then it's ready for the finish. The one-handed maker would not make you watch all of this sanding. First I need to fill a couple of holes in the wenge with some brown Starbond CA glue. I'll first apply a coat of de-waxed shellac to seal the wood and to give it a bit of an amber tone, and then I'll take it outside to spray on a few coats of conversion varnish. I'm using conversion varnish because that's what the client's box is finished with. And here are a few photos of the finished product. So I gotta ask, would you make it? <laughs>